Brand new designs are up on the Edge Redbubble, werewolves, spiders, FedEx amphibians, protocrocs, and more. Go check out the Redbubble with links in the description and comment section below. Ankylosaurs, the armored turtle dragons, are easily some of the coolest dinosaurs. They diverged from the stegosaurs during the early Jurassic. The stegosaurs decided to go light on armor in exchange for big bluffing billboard plates, plus a thagomizer of spines on the tail for defense. Ankylosaurs took the other route. They developed extremely wide, fat bodies, short, robust limbs, obnoxiously robust armor all over their bodies, and stiffened, rod-like tails covered in saw-toothed blades or bulging war clubs. But their evolution and true diversity is a little bit of a mystery. A mystery that has just become more mysterious and expansive than previously thought thanks to a new discovery in Chile. Meet the brand new Stegoros, the roof tail. The remains of what would go on to be called Stegoros were excavated by a team of Chilean paleontologists including Sergio Soto Acuño, Alexander Vargas, Jonathan Caluza, and so many more friends on a steep hill on an inhospitable area near Chile's Torres del Paine National Park about three years ago. They excavated the specimen out of the Dorotea Formation, which has been dated to between 71 and 74 million years ago, the late Cretaceous. They found a rather complete skeleton that contained bits of the skull, most of the spine, the hips, parts of the front and hind limbs, the tail, and a whole bunch of armor. Once the skeleton was properly prepared in the field and taken out of the ground, it was transported to the Instituto Nacional Antártico Chileno for further preparation and study. Once back at the lab, the field jackets were removed and the rocks were carefully chiseled away from the fossils. The creature these bones belonged to was not only bizarre, has large implications for its closest relatives, but might also shake up the ankylosaur family tree. Oh yeah, spoilers, it was an ankylosaur, an ankylosaur like no other. Stegoros was a very small ankylosaurian dinosaur. The little potato would have only reached about 5 feet, or 1.5 meters in length. The little porker may have only weighed as much as a heavy alligator snapping turtle. It had a skull shape in between that of a stegosaur and an ankylosaur. It was far narrower than most ankylosaurs, but wider than most stegosaurs. South American ankylosaurs are very rare, and the known ones are rather fragmentary. So, to get a skull as complete as Stegoros is truly a holy grail. The beak was wide and ended in recurved points. It wasn't broad like most ankylosaurs, and it was narrower and pointier than something like Stegosaurus itself. Unlike the more advanced ankylosaurs, these guys didn't have any horns or armor on the back of the skull. It had a relatively long neck attached to a wide torso. Stegoros differs from known ankylosaurs by having long, thin limbs, which were much more like those of stegosaurs. Stegoros had a very wide pelvis that was topped by a thin layer of dermal bone. The tail was short, stubby, and flat from top to bottom. Without further ado, the most obviously bizarre characteristic is the tail club. The tail vertebrae were very flat, but not fused together as in the hammer-tailed ankylosaurs. Instead, the bones were inside of a sheath of semi-fused and interlocking osteoderms that were semi-conical, pointed outwards and slightly upwards. Their texture is very rough and craggly. Altogether, the weapon appears very similar to the Aztec war club, the Makuitl. This weapon was a large wooden bat or paddle-shaped thing with shards and blades of obsidian along the long end. They were in use by many Mesoamerican civilizations from 900 to 1570, with the largest being as much as 6.6 .6 pounds and 47 inches 130 centimeters long. Obviously, the exact use for this tail isn't known with 100% certainty, but as a defensive weapon is a really good inference. It remains a possibility that it doubled as a sexual signal of health. But is it? 
It lived in South America near the end of the Cretaceous. It therefore would have been living with some of the largest terrestrial carnivores to ever live. The known Stegoro specimen isn't a baby, but probably isn't quite the very largest they could have grown. We can assume this is a good average though. It was a bit small to be able to effectively protect itself from the biggest and nastiest Carcharodontosaurs, or Abelosaurs. The thing here is that not every single animal and every single ecosystem is adapted to specifically defend themselves against the very top predators. Many don't ever meet top predators due to their life habits. It's possible this is what is going on here that Stegoros was adapted to defend itself against just its top predators. I can imagine that tail would give a nasty whack to any foot or shin bones in striking range. You know, it also kind of looks like the segments of a rattlesnake's tail. Unfortunately, I think the authors of the paper would have discussed this if there was any merit to it. The scoots that make up the segments of a rattlesnake's tail have a very specific shape, inside and out. For anyone to infer a similar use, one would have to observe the exact same shapes, inside and out. Stegoros's tail is just not shaped right. Let's take a look at a rattlesnake's tail real quick. See, cut in half we can observe that each segment is completely hollow. Each segment grows underneath the next and is only locked together due to having the same shape. The first segment is shaped like a cartoonized corn cob or some ribbed plastic tubing. As more grow, the new ones push the old one up and are locked into the old one because the ribs are locked together from friction. None of the snake's tailbones go into the rattle. This just makes it easier to flop around at such a high rate that it clacks together to make the sounds. Our Stegoros friend is just built different. The tailbones go into all of the armor, and the armor is fused together to create that Makoidal shaped axe. The armor may have been a little hollow, but not enough to create sound like a rattle. So no rattle tail. Another aspect to this angry pinecone that makes it an amazing find is where it was found and the evolutionary implications its anatomy holds. It comes from the southern tip of South America. Ankylosaurs as a whole are rather rare in the southern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere being a generalized description for the continents that were once part of the supercontinent Gondwana. Before the split of Pangaea, ancestral ankylosaurs were everywhere. After the split, they diversified in both the northern continents, Laurasia and such, and the southern Gondwanan continents. Fossils from those Gondwanan continents come only from Australia and one from Antarctica. Then came a specimen from Morocco in late 2021. And now one from the southern tip of South America. What was once thought to be survivors eking out a living in isolated parts of the southern continents are revealing themselves to be undiscovered lineages of totally unknown armored dinosaurs. Spicomelus was just a rib with fused spikes. What it looks like is unknown at this time beyond a generalized ankylosaur. Its existence proves armored dinosaurs were still in Africa once the continents separated. Antarctica was once part of Pangaea and then part of Gondwana before moving south for the winter. The last continent it was closest to was South America, and it remains that way today. Antarctopelta is another super fragmentary armored dinosaur, but comes from Antarctica and shares a lot of characteristics with this new Stegoros and the armored pineapples from Australia. The critters in the outback are Conbarosaurus and Minmi. Minmi belongs to the Ankylosaurids, so we can't ignore it. The authors of the new paper found that Stegoros was most closely related to Conbarosaurus and Antarctopelta. They all formed their own unique group with a deep unknown evolutionary history, placing them as an extremely early branching group of the Ankylosaurian dinosaurs. This means they belong to their own clade. The team named their new clade Parankylosauria. That also means the other ankylosaurs need a new designation too, so they are now the Euankylosauria. The new Chilean loaf of bread is so complete that it can now be used to infer some possible anatomy of its relatives where blanks exist. Kunbarasaurus is very complete as well, but it's missing the end of its tail. 
Antarctopelta has some preserved tail bones, but the end is also missing. The similarities in the tail vertebrae between Stegoros and Antarctopelta suggested to our team that Antarctopelta may have had a tail weapon similar to Stegoros. I can't help but think this opens the door to other possible tail weapon arrangements, constructions, and shapes. Stegoros proves that ankylosaur specializations first evolved in the skull. This is because it has a skull more like ankylosaurs than stegosaurs, but the armor, tail club, and limbs are distinct from the later ankylosaurs. This means ankylosaurids and notosaurids evolved their tail weapons and armor independently of one another multiple times over the Cretaceous period. There is a lot known about the advanced, latest surviving members of the armored dinosaurs, but very little about their origins and all the different routes they took. This new little turtle dragon proves there is much more to learn about armored dinosaurs of Gondwana. According to Ankylosaur expert Dr. Jim Kirkland's Twitter teases, there may be more battle axe Ankylosaurs to be described. All aboard the hype train. The 3D models in this video were made by Kuzim, or Adam Midzuk, and the animations were made by Tyler Addison. Their socials will be included in the description and the comment section below. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks goes to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, Chris Frampton, Biotaverse, Arda Bayer, and Christoph Hubbinger, as well as my Tyrannosaur patrons, Iron Bladesman, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.